Let's move on to some examples, which is really the best way to master punctuation inside your research writing. So let's begin here. This is a correct example, but let's just go over it really fast here. All mathematics teachers know that word problems are more difficult for students to solve than are numerical problems. What the teachers do not know is how to teach students to solve word problems. Now this looks a little bit complicated and it looks like it might need some commas. But if you look at it carefully, there's actually no room for any commas in there. You do not have any non-restrictive clauses where you can separate the pieces out. It's all very clear and connected and needed. So I suggest when you see sentences like this that are a little bit long, this is two sentences, but the first one's a bit long. When you see a sentence that's a bit long, go through and start cutting out words and phrases and see if the sentence can still make sense. Let's look at some example where we can clearly see what's wrong. The selection was translated from English into each of the other five languages, native speakers of each language, who were also proficient in English, carried out the translations. Now here we see a number of commas jammed in here, which actually make the reading and understanding a little bit difficult. Let's look at the correct sentence. The selection was translated from English into each of the five languages, period. Now here's a good example of remember to try to keep your sentences short. You don't need to stick every idea into one sentence. You're much better off trying to get your ideas separated into separate sentences and keep your sentences short. So in this example, I think you can see right away, very uh, short and sweet, right to the point. Native speakers of each language who were also proficient in English carried out the translations. Now here we have a comma and a comma. So if we take out this bit here, can this be a whole sentence? Native speakers of English, uh, native speakers of each language carried out the translations. Yes, that can be a whole sentence. So that's a good example of a non restrictive adjective clause. That is, we need a comma before and we need a comma after because the sentence still has, uh, still can be a sentence and it still makes sense. It still has the same basic idea. Here we have two long sentences uh, joined at a conjunction and a comma, but a better way would be to use a colon with a capital letter, just putting these two sentences together. Fathers who were single parents were expected to display greater androgyny than were fathers in dual parent households. Androgyny was assessed by a standard inventory and by an activity checklist. Clearly these are two separate sentences that don't need to be together. So we would be, be best to just have them separated, but we can bring them together with a colon, a space, and a capital. The idea being these two ideas are highly related, so we want them together. Average intelligence scores are defining characteristic of dyslexia. And here we end it. And then at the incorrect, we have two hyphens, which makes a dash. Thus, it is impossible to compare empirically the intelligence of dyslexic and normal reading children. So clearly, a dash does not uh, have a capital letter after it. Rather, a dash explains something in more detail or changes the tone. So it's best just to have a period here because it's two separate sentences. The child was seated at a table and given a variety of materials to use for the collage. And here we have this comma here. So again, very simple, we just come and ask. If it's a comma and a conjunction, can the before be independent and can the after be independent? The child was seated at a table. Yes, that's good so far. 
given a variety of materials to use for the collage. You know, that's no good because it has no subject. So it's lacking a subject, so we can't do that. We can use a conjunction, though, with no comma. The independent variables were partner's gender, audience size, and criterion for success. So here we can see the incorrect is missing the last serial comma. Any response that resulted in reward for the contingent participant also resulted in reward for the yoked partner. And here we have the comma here. Any response that resulted in a reward for the contingent participant, comma, also resulted in reward for the yoked partner. So can we cut this piece out and the sentence will still have the same meaning and still be a clear sentence? And the answer is no. This is specifically telling you is a special participant that has this situation. So we must keep it in, which means no comma. The computer monitor displayed the training options and the respondent selected one by pressing the corresponding key. Here we have a comma and here we have no comma. So which one is correct? Well, we can see that the correct one is with a comma and that is because the computer monitor displayed the training options. That can be a sentence, that's good. The respondent selected one by pressing the corresponding key. That can be an independent sentence. So these two can be independent, so we can use the conjunction and the comma. The confederate who was going to agree with the participant always spoke up before the confederate who was going to disagree with the participant. So here our difference is the comma here, and then we have the comma up here, which is the same. So the question again is, is this an independent or dependent clause? The confederate who is going to agree with the participant always spoke up before the confederate who was going to disagree with the participant. So it looks to me like this part of the sentence goes all the way to the end rather than being a separate idea always spoke up before the confederate here. You cannot really cut this out. It doesn't make sense anymore because it goes together. So that is not a non-restrictive adjective clause. The description of the assault which was taken from an actual case was identical with the respondents in all the experimental conditions. So here we have our comma and our conjunction which and a comma here. If we cut these out and we read the sentence again, the description of the assault was identical for the respondents in all of the experimental conditions. That's spine and actually the sentence has very much the same idea. So we can do that. We can have two commas. That's another correct one here. The possibilities were suggested by Miller, Galanter, and Pribium. So remember that last comma. The treatment was tested on clients who complained of phobias or addictions. So here we have a comma, and for the correct one, we do not have a comma. Remember that the conjunction, if you use it with a comma, you must have independent before and after, subject and verb before and subject and verb after, but you do not have that, so no comma. The team members who scored highest on the preliminary task was the designated leader. The team member who scored the highest on the preliminary task. So here we have this comma, meaning that if we cut out this piece here, can this sentence have the same idea, the same meaning? And the answer is no, it is not able to be separated that way. It's very clearly the same idea. On the preliminary task was the designated leader. The team member was the designated leader. So no comma there. 
Pupillary dilation was measured at the time of stimulus onset. And here we have our difference. Heart rate was measured when the response was emitted. So in this case, we have a comma, but remember that we have to be able to have an independent before here. Pupillary dilation was measured at the time of stimulus onset. Heart rate was measured when the purpose was emitted. And this seems very independent. It has a subject and a verb all on its own. So how can we join that together? We could use a comma and a conjunction, comma and, or we can just use a semicolon. And that's what's done here, a semicolon. Respondents were told that the occupations of the three people were newscaster, farmer, and accountant. And here we go. Teacher, plumber, and dentist, or opti optician librarian and welder. And in this case, what we have is a list. We have three lists, right? This is A, and then this is uh, B, and then this is C. And each list has three things, one, two, and three, one, two, and three, one, two, and three. So how do we separate those? Because we've got a comma, a comma, a conjunction, and then what do we use? We use the semicolon, then comma, comma, and the last one has the conjunction there and then a semicolon, so this one.